Hey everyone, it's World Film Geek here, and we are kicking 2021 off with an interview with Gary Durden. He's best known for his role as Warwick Brown on the show. I am so honored to be talking to you today. Oh yes, well, thank you very much for coming out. Yeah, I've been watching, I've been watching you since uh, Different World and uh, CSI, oh. so <laughs> you can just imagine how like honored I am to be talking to you about Redemption Day, which was oh, wow. really good. Redemption. Yeah. Thank you. And uh yeah, you were excellent in it. You just you had the emotional range and you got to kick butt at the same time and overall a great performance. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So my first question is, what inspired you to take on the role of Brad Paxton? Uh, well I was really excited actually because um I I thought that it would be a great opportunity to show uh an armed serviceman of that with uh, some kind of range. You know, also often, often we see action and actors and military films. And after a while, the, the characters can be so unflappable and so superhero-like that we lose certain quality. So I was, I was able to craft this character because of armed servicemen that I actually know that I've been friends with over the years, Navy SEALs, uh, Marine Rangers. But I wanted to put some depth and, and put some more dimensions in the character with like, some of those PTSD swords and try to incorporate it in. And it's not easy because it's an action thriller film, so mm -hmm. you can't take too much artistic life and take too much emotional breaks. But um, it, it was good because the director was keen on that as well. That's awesome. And that's one of the things that attracted, attracted me to the role was not just a, you know, one-dimensional guy to shoot him up, you know, very similar to films that we've seen, the premise. But um, but uh, also the other thing that attracted me is that he's not just going into a foreign country and just shooting him up this bad guy. He actually has a respect for some of these places because he's done missions there before, so he's, he's, he's learned the language, he's learned some of the customs, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he goes in there with a different, different kind of respect for the, 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 the culture in general. Uh, that was important for me to try to, you know, I understand that film has does have a responsibility, and oftentimes we do perpetuate images that we've seen, we do perpetuate real life sometimes. Sometimes life imitates art and vice versa, so it was important for me. And I did have some some, some hills to leap over mm -hmm. in regards to that because, uh, you know, sometimes it can, so there can be some negative connotations to, to different places that you're filming because you're going to have an antagonist and a protagonist in the film. You're going to have to have a bad guy. Yeah. So in this way, it was able to, we were able to go in and have the character really um, to go in to, to understand more of the culture by this character taking it on and speaking the language and donning some of the customs and really in certain respect for the people and seeing some kind-hearted individuals who do see the plight and, and do see uh, what the character is dealing with and decide to help him, regardless of him being a foreigner. That's it's awesome. Very important for me. It's a very important arc for me to try to 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 uh, translate through the film. That's and great. And it was with a Moroccan director. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've been to Morocco a few times. This is my second film there. Um, actually, it was the first film I've done, a uh, film since. And um, I was really proud that it was a Moroccan director from with the uh, mostly Moroccan crew. Uh, it was co production. And we had a lot of American actors, but it was great because I, I really got to, to, to immerse myself in the culture there. And that was fantastic to do, especially when you're as American as I am, born and raised in Philadelphia, our first American city. It's great to go over the foreign land. And, the place that's 6,000 years BC and really get the local customs and flavor. And the food is amazing as well. But that, you know, the food came later. <laughs> that's why I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay in Morocco because of the food. <laughs> I thought it was a great opportunity to so. That's and, great. Um, I'm, I was very proud that the director picked me and he wanted to be the helmet. That's awesome. And uh, speaking of which, I will be talking to the director um, the next week. So that's going to be pretty cool to get his point of view. And one thing I really liked about the film was you and Sorinda Swan together. You had this sense of natural chemistry as husband and wife. And my question is, did the two of you had time to prepare how to go about the chemistry before production began? Or you just 
did it on the fly. Well, knowing that we didn't have a lot of time with each other, I think she was doing the project right before, so she had like a 24-hour fly-in, and we start shooting like a, three days later. We spoke a lot on the phone, and and since I think mostly because she's an ultimate professional, came prepared. Mm -hmm. We just we got some time with each other. Uh, we we did a film, did some filming, and then both of us had a couple of days off or a day off. So we we went on a little uh, day trip journey through the desert and hung out with each other and just got to know each other. And and she's such a super professional. That that's what it's like when you. It's the same case with working with Andy Garcia and and, and Donovan and um, also of course Ernie Hudson. When you're working with professionals, they raise the bar for you, and they make you work harder because you got to be on your toes. And that's just a great day of work. There's great stories that that, that take place because everyone has a, a long history of being in film, and everyone has great stories to be able, great jokes as well. And uh, man, I had a, a fantastic time filming with this cast. I'm yeah. looking forward to doing it, doing, doing it again, possibly. That's awesome. And I got to say, it must feel honored to have Ernie Hudson play your dad in the movie. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> what a good choice. I look back at the footage after we filmed, and, and I was like, damn, he really do look like related. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that was quite, quite an honor. Quite an honor. So what I really was impressed with was during the last, the third act of the film, you get to engage in firepower and you even engage in some fisticuffs and you pull off some nifty moves against one of the terrorists. And so I got to know, you got, do you have like a background in like some sort of fighting style or did you just like learn it for the movie and you just went with it? Cause you were just, you made it look too easy. You know, I, I, as a younger man, I was taking martial arts uh, when I was young and, and then I had uh, lost my way with martial arts. I kept up training. I, I do this pie boxing thing every every year where I just uh, treat myself as a birthday present to go at a boxing camp and turn off my cell phone and, and just eat really healthy green stuff and, and then just train five hours a day. So I was doing that, but with the film, it's a different thing because you have to, you have to do the scenes over and over again until you get it right in different angles. Mm -hmm. So it takes a different kind of conditioning that I don't think I was used to. Now, perhaps Jackie Chan or, or Dwayne The Rock, mm -hmm. they're used to doing it. They've done 50 but So for me, it was a learning curve. It was also a learning curve because of the part choreographers that, that the director chose. They have a different experience. One of them has an experience of working in the rock and film, so he's very broad. Mm -hmm. And the other one hadn't hadn't much experience as well, so I was able to incorporate some of my ideas for choreography into the scenes as well. And hopefully, it came off. I you know I feel good about it, and I, I wish we had more time to, to dedicate to just part of the film. And I was pushing for it to to put more in there, but we had at the, at the place that we were filming, we had a, a certain amount of time, and we had to go to another location, so we we were under a time constraint. But it was fun nonetheless, even though we were shooting, it was below zero, it was at night, and winter time in the desert, it's not easy trying to keep your limbs moving. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta say, keep, keep, keep I, flexible. I gotta say, got yeah, I gotta say, you made it look too easy uh, with that fight scene. I'm just like, wow. I was like, yeah, he, he definitely needs to do more of this. <laughs> it would be nice. I, I like getting physical. And it was a great opportunity to uh, to get some of that play on. You know, I've always wanted to, to, to be more physical with the role, so I'm, I'm happy to. Uh, I was happy to, to, to get that. I think I thought I, I was in my element when we were filming and coming up with different ideas. That's awesome. So I'm looking forward to, to doing the next one. So, what would you say was the toughest thing about um, production on the film? I'm guessing it would be like maybe the time the time constraint. My guess would be, but. Time for sure, because after you, you get into it, you really get into it, so you get so many ideas. And the other thing is, is you want to be inventive and you want to do something that's not been done before. You don't want to be derivative. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've watched so many different action films, and, and I, there's so many heroes of mine, whether it was Sylvester Stallone or Dwayne or Jackie Chan. I have so many film heroes that have just done it so well, and that is the, the heart. 
hardest thing is that you don't you don't want to let these guys down, you know. Right. <laughs> you want to at least be competitive in the way that they're, they 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 appreciate their effort. So that was one thing. It was the, the, the time constraint. Um, but other than that, the whole film, just being in Morocco, was just a pleasure because the people are so kind and they're full of such great history. And as I said, my biggest problem is just trying to stop eating so much. <laughs> So, um, my last question is, um, now that TV and film production is slowly coming back, are there any new projects that you can talk about? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a show called First Wives Club that I uh, just finished an episode of that I'll be doing a few episodes of. Uh, and that's with Michelle Bouteau, who is hilarious, who just came out with the book. Uh, what is the name of her, her, her book? I remember that uh, this event. Also, Jill Scott's in the show. Mm -hmm. And Michelle Bass uh, is, is plays the other lead. And it's a comedy. And I'm looking forward to it because every time I was get back to set in the daytime, I laughed the whole day through. Because Michelle's a stand-up comedian, and she just doesn't let you rest. She's hilarious. <laughs> that was a fantastic time I had. We filmed that in Atlanta. It's filmed in New York. It takes place in New York. It's filmed in Atlanta in New York. I'm looking forward to after the New Year's to, to continue that show. Mm -hmm. And then we just finished a film called The Moderator back in Morocco. But I'm not exactly sure of a release date. But it was with some of the same production and it should be directed with us. So he was one of the producers on this new film. Uh, directed by Zor uh, Fastikilius. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So I got to say, yeah. I, I'm, I'm hoping, because the way the movie, the way Redemption Day ended, um, I have a feeling... I'm hoping that Brad Paxton will come back for another adventure, and hopefully this time around you'll get to kick some more butt. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna you, you words to God's ears, man. I, I hope that does happen. I'm looking forward to another one. That's awesome. So Redemption Day is coming on January the eighth, and everyone, anyone who wants to see Gary go from CSI in a different world to playing a major butt kicking character with an emotional range. They will want to see this movie. And Gary, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about the movie. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your beautiful praise. And have a great holiday. You too. All right, you take care. Bye-bye.